Hello, and welcome to your dbscan lecture. So today we're going to talk about another clustering algorithm called dbscan. dbscan is an acronym that stands for Density-Based Spatial Clustering of Applications with Noise, but we're just going to refer to it as dbscan. dbscan is an algorithm that uses density rather than cohesion to cluster data points into clusters. Density refers to the idea that data points are very close to their neighbors. This doesn't mean they have to be close to all the members of their cluster, but they're very close to the data points that they're next to. dbscan has three important hyperparameters that you need to choose. One is the distance metric, which typically we're going to use Euclidean distance, but the other two we need to find values for. To measure density, dbscan uses neighborhoods around data points in order to count how many neighbors are within that neighborhood. In order to define a neighborhood, we need to say how big that neighborhood should be. Should we look one unit around our data point, 10 units? That hyperparameter that controls that is called ep, short for epsilon. It determines the size of our neighborhood. We also have to choose a definition of density. How dense is dense? The hyperparameter that allows us to control this is called min points, or sometimes it's called min samples. This is the minimum number of neighbors that a data point has to have within epsilon distance of it in order to be considered dense. The higher min points or min samples is, the more data points need to be crammed around our data point for us to consider it to be dense. Now, we'll talk about the algorithm in a second, but one thing I want to talk about is the unique benefits of dbscan. The previous clustering algorithms that we've learned assume very specific things about the shape of our clusters. K-means assume spherical variance, so basically we could wrap a sphere around our clusters, and Gaussian mixtures relaxes this assumption a little bit by assuming that we can have different variances for our different features, but dbscan actually doesn't assume anything about the actual shape of the clusters we're going to create. It does assume that our clusters are dense, which we'll talk more about in a second, but it doesn't assume that they have a specific shape. So for example, if we have clusters that are weirdly shaped, like the clusters in this graph, dbscan can handle this, and this is completely unlike Gaussian mixtures and k-means that could absolutely not. Another benefit is in the name. The N in dbscan stands for noise. In all of our other algorithms, every single data point in our data set must belong to a cluster, even if it's really far away from all of our other data. And while this can be desirable in some cases, sometimes we just want to be able to say this data point does not belong to any of our clusters. If you look at this example here, this is a good example of a data set that has noise that we might not want to put in our clusters. Here you can see we have a bunch of pretty dense clusters, even though some of them are a little weirdly shaped. But we also have a scattering of points that are not Dense. They aren't really close to any of their neighbors, and we can visually tell that they don't belong to a cluster. But in all of our other algorithms, they would be assigned to a cluster, and even worse, in k-means and Gaussian mixtures, they would affect where the means and in Gaussian mixtures the variances of the clusters are. dbscan is the only algorithm that allows us to classify data points as noise, aka they don't belong to any of our clusters. This is because dbscan assumes that clusters are high density. In other words, data points within a cluster are very close to their neighbors. Now, they don't have to be close to all of the other data points in the cluster, like in this cluster, the data points at one end are not that close to data points in the other, but in this cluster, data points are very close to their neighbors within that cluster. If we have data points that are low density, like the ones in this cluster, we might want to not put them in a cluster dbscan assumes that our clusters are dense and they're surrounded by areas of low density, aka noise. And all of that is awesome, but dbscan does have some downsides. The first downside is that it can be ineffective with really high dimensional data. Now, I'm not talking about clustering on like three features, but if we have a ton of different features that we're clustering on, dbscan can struggle. 
This is because of the curse of dimensionality. If you think about different dimensions, like one dimension versus two dimensions versus three dimensions, the more dimensions you have, the more space just exists. And the more space there is to occupy, the less likely it is that data points will be close to each other in that space. Another time it can struggle is with overlapping or touching clusters. For instance, this is a bit of an extreme example, but if you look at the data set on the left, DBSCAN would really struggle with this. When we look at this with human eyes, I see basically two separate clusters, a circle on the left and one on the right. But because of the way that DBSCAN defines clusters, any region of density that is touching each other is going to be classified in the same cluster. So DBSCAN would actually put all of these data points in one cluster, which is practically useless. Another time that it can be ineffective is when we have clusters that have different densities. Remember I said that DBSCAN assumes that clusters have high density and then are surrounded by areas of low density. But if our clusters have different densities, it's really easy for DBSCAN to mistake it for noise. This is because those EPS and min samples values that we choose are the same for the entire data set. It's not like we can define the neighborhood and the number of neighbors for one cluster and then define it differently for another cluster, and so it can struggle. For instance, here, we might classify this as a cluster, and then everything else might classify it as noise. All right, so let's talk about the actual dbSCAN algorithm. The two hyperparameters we need to think about are EPS, which tells us the size of our neighborhood, and min points or min samples, which tells us how many neighbors a data point needs in order for it to be considered dense. So we have a few definitions that we need to look at. The first and most important one is a core point. A core point is basically a data point that is very dense. It has a lot of neighbors very close by. The way we define a core point in dbSCAN is by looking in a neighborhood around that data point and the size of the neighborhood is determined by our EPS and we count the number of neighbors that occur within that neighborhood. If the data point has at least min points neighbors, we consider it a core point. So basically we look at the neighborhood, count the number of neighbors. If it has a lot of neighbors, it's a core point. Here we can see an example of a core point when we're using EPS of 0.125 and a min points of three. You can see that when we look at this yellow data point, we can count the number of neighbors it has, one, two, three, four. And so this has at least three neighbors and therefore it's a core point. But not all of our data points can be core points. For instance, a lot of our data points are going to not have enough neighbors. If our data point does not have enough neighbors to qualify as a core point, then we need to check whether it has any neighbors, and if so, if one of those neighbors is a core point. If this data point doesn't have enough neighbors, but does have a neighbor that is a core point, we count this as a border point. Again, a border point does not have enough neighbors to qualify as a core point, but does have a core point neighbor. Here we can see an example of a border point. When we look at its neighborhood, it only has one neighbor, so it certainly doesn't qualify as a core point. But if we look here, right at the edge of its neighborhood, it has one neighbor that is itself a core point. Therefore, this is a border point. And last but not least, we have noise points. Noise points also don't have enough neighbors to be a core point, but in addition, it doesn't even have a core point as a neighbor. These are the data points that we're not gonna put in any cluster. They're too far away to be considered part of any of the groups we're creating. Again, this is an example of a noise point. When we look at its neighborhood, it has literally zero neighbors, so it's a noise point. Here's a handy little flowchart to help you remember how to classify data points. First, we look at the neighborhood around our data point. The size of the neighborhood is determined by EPS. If it has more than min points neighbors, it's a core point. If it doesn't, then we have to ask whether or not it has a core point neighbor. If it does, it's a border point. If it doesn't, it's a noise point. So what does this have to do with our algorithm? Well, we're gonna use these three types of points in order to create our clusters. Remember, we want clusters that are high density, which means data points are very close to their neighbors. And what has high density? Core points. So in order to talk about the algorithm of how we connect core points in order to create clusters, we need three more definitions. These are basically in order from most to least restrictive. 
first we have directly density reachable. Remember, density means that you have a lot of neighbors in close proximity. So directly density reachable basically means we start off with a core point and any data point within its neighborhood is directly density reachable. Here, if we start at this core point, this point here is directly density reachable because it is in the neighborhood of our core point. So if we label this data point as Q and this one as P, we could say the data point P is directly density reachable from Q. One important thing to know is that you can only be directly density reachable from a core point. We must start with a core point in order for something to be directly density reachable. Next, and a little bit less restrictively, we have density reachable. Directly density reachable meant you were directly in the neighborhood of a core point. Density reachable means that you don't have to be in the same neighborhood, but you have to be connected by a chain of directly density reachable points. So for instance, if we look at this data point, which is a core point, and this data point, this data point, we'll label this P, is not directly density reachable from our core point Q. This is because it's not in the neighborhood of Q. However, there is a chain of core points that connects Q to P. This point is directly density reachable from Q. And this point is directly density reachable from that point. And finally, P is directly density reachable from that last core point. Because there's a chain of points that can connect them, we call Q and P density reachable. Our last definition is the least restrictive. It's density connected. This is basically like when two people are both friends with the same person, but aren't friends with each other. For two points to be density connected, it means they're both density reachable from the same core point. So if we have a core point right here, and we have two points here and here, they might not be density reachable from each other, but they both might be density reachable from the same core point, and therefore they're density connected. Now that we have all that terminology out of the way, let's talk about the algorithm. The goal of dbscan is to have dense clusters. So what we do is we find a data point, and if it's a core point, then we find every single data point that is density reachable from that core point. All of those data points will be in the same cluster. If a data point is a noise point, we just mark it and move on. Then once we found a cluster or a noise point, then we move on to a new data point. If it's a core point, we find all the density reachable points from that core point and put it in a cluster. And then we move on over and over until every data point is either a noise point or in a cluster. Now, if we are randomly selecting data points, we might end up with this one. And we can see that this is a core point. So because it's a core point, dbscan is going to go look for everything that is density reachable. Well, this is, and this is, and this is, and this is, and this is. So we would put all of those data points in a cluster. Notice that only border points and core points can be in a cluster. Noise, by definition, will not belong to a cluster. So again, this algorithm is going to repeat until all of our data points are either in a cluster or marked as noise. Now, you might notice that nowhere in this process did we need to define the number of clusters. That's one benefit of dbscan. We don't need to predetermine the number of clusters that we think there are, like we do with k-means or Gaussian mixtures. Now, once we have noise from our clusters, we can just keep it as noise, which would make sense. It's really far away from all of our other data points. But we can also assign it to the closest cluster if we absolutely need to. Now, because dbscan values density, it's not necessarily going for cohesion, although dbscan works really well for cohesive clusters. What dbscan is valuing is that data points are very close to their neighbors, but because we're chaining points together, it's not necessarily the case that all of the data points in our cluster must be close together. For instance, as we saw before with this snake-shaped cluster, this is very dense. Data points are very close to their neighbors, and as you can see, there's chains of points connecting every data point in this cluster. All of it is density reachable. However, this doesn't mean that all of our data points need to be close together. You can see that the head and tail of the snake are very far apart. You can also see, now that you know what the algorithm is, why it would struggle with these types of data. 
When we have two clusters that either overlap or at least touching, these two clusters are density reachable from each other. So our dbSCAN algorithm is going to classify them as the same cluster. On the right hand side with different density clusters, you can clearly see that depending on the EPS or the min samples that we choose, this area is clearly going to be marked as noise because it has a very different density than the data points in this cluster. So I mentioned before that we have to choose these two hyperparameters and I didn't really tell you how to find that. Well, one way to choose min points is to use your domain knowledge or your distance metrics. If you look at your data, you can get at least a rough idea of what a good distance would be. Now, it's hard to visualize high dimensional data, but you can at least look and see, okay, how many neighbors do data points have? Some rules of thumb that you can follow are the more rows your data has, so the more data points, the higher your min point should be. If we have more data, points are more likely to have more neighbors, so we should up that. Also, if you notice more noise in your data set, you should also increase your min points. That way the algorithm will be able to accurately tell what is noise. Lastly, the more features you have, the larger you should make your min points. And once you have a number of minimum points, there's actually a great way to choose the size of your neighborhood, your EPS. This is gonna use the elbow method, which basically looks for the inflection point on a graph. Here, the graph we're using is the distance between data points and their neighbors. We're gonna use the number of minimum points to calculate, on average, how far are data points from their fifth furthest neighbor or sixth furthest neighbor. Then we're gonna plot that, like you can see in this graph here, and we're gonna look for the inflection point. This is usually a good cutoff for what we should determine as the neighborhood around a point. If you happen to have some domain knowledge that allows you to choose the size of your neighborhood, absolutely you can use that, but typically that's not going to be the case. And just like our other clustering algorithms, dbSCAN has been used for some really interesting applications. Here in this paper, it was used to cluster stars. In this paper, it was used for image segmentation. Again, this is when we cluster the pixels in an image to tell where different things in the image are. And lastly, in this example, it was used to cluster students based on engagement in a virtual learning situation. All right, so dbSCAN is another one of our clustering algorithms. And unless like the other clustering algorithms we've learned so far, it doesn't necessarily assume anything about the shape of our clusters. All it assumes is that they're dense. It's also the only algorithm we'll learn that allows you to classify points as noise, aka not assign them to any cluster. dbSCAN forms clusters by using chains of density reachable points. Anything that is density reachable from a core point is in the same cluster as that core point. All right, that's all I have for you. I will see you next time.